Hello, my name is Alan Mzungu. I'm a lawyer at MMS Advocates LLP. Today I'm going to talk about partnerships and these are some of the things we're going to discuss. What are partnerships? What do you consider when getting into partnerships? Uh, what areas are you going to cover when you're getting into partnership agreements, among other areas? Partnerships are coming together of more than one person for a specific purpose, which could be a business goal or a different objective. Traditionally, they are very popular with the service industry. So you'll find this with lawyers, accountants, and other professionals who are in the service industry. So one will be lawyers like ourselves, where two or three or more of you would like to come together and form a law firm. So you get into discussions about what it means to be a partner in that firm. And the beauty about our partnership regulatory framework it allows you to state all those uh, details in a document which you call your partnership deed. So the entities you can use for that uh, include a business name, which is under the Business Names Act or a limited liability partnership. And depending on your considerations, either of them could do. And one is as good as the other, depending on what you would like to achieve. So you must have a common business objective. For instance, like I said, a law firm, you want to start a law firm, so that's your objective. You come together and you discuss how you're going to do that as partners and what your responsibilities are going to be, what you're entitled to, how someone can join, how does someone exit, how do you distribute income, are there going to be any other responsibilities and uh, housekeeping issues uh, around that. And then what entities you can use, I've touched on this briefly before. The business name is what was previously used because this has been in existence longer than the limited liability partnership. So you will register a business name and you will have each individual's name in that business name certificate and uh, you are generally equal partners as far as the registration aspect is concerned because you don't have someone's share displayed on the certificate and there's no one who says one is a bigger partner than the other. So where that goes is in the partnership deed. Now you also have an option of the limited liability partnership. This is still close enough to the business name. It's just that it is an entity which is, uh, has perpetual succession. You can sue and it can be sued in its own name and the liability of the partners is limited to the limited liability partnership uh, stake. And in contrast to the business name, the business name is not a separate entity. Each the partner and all of them are jointly and severally liable for the liabilities of the, the business name. And uh, you realize it can't so it be sued in its own name. It can only uh, be sued in the name of the partners and trading as a certain business name. So those are the considerations when you're looking at whether to do an LLP or a business name. What is key in both of these scenarios is a partnership deed because this is where you define everything that governs the partnership. One of the things which I've experienced as a difficult area when you're structuring partnerships is the rights and responsibility of partners and sharing or distribution of income. So these things, there's really no formula for you to settle on whether you will decide that someone has a certain share and that's the amount which they will be entitled to as a distribution at the end of it or uh, as their share of the expenses. Or you can decide on a more creative and a modern formula of weighted metrics where you say, for instance, if you bring in this number of clients, this amount of revenue, you take up responsibility for admin, HR or other issues which are not necessarily directly linked to income generation, that also it builds into your entitlement to distribution at the end. So that's, that's very critical. How do you share revenues and how do you distribute profits and also what responsibility each of you has. That's the core of the partnership deed. But other areas which also you shouldn't ignore when you're discussing your partnership deed is how do you bring on board new partners? Is it something which has to be unanimous? All of you have to agree or only a certain majority or you know whichever way it goes it has to be agreed the next thing is that how is the exit strategy because someone has to have an option to to exit should they choose to or uh, they might be forced out for some reason maybe gross misconduct or you know putting the firm into disrepute these are things which you discuss at the point of the partnership deed and uh, whereas there are many templates and precedents you can use it is very important that you get into the nitty-gritties yourself and make sure each and every item is 
considered at the point of entering into this partnership deed so that it's not generic but it works for you and not one size fits all and uh, what may work for a law firm may not work for an audit firm what may work for an audit firm may not work for a medical or healthcare kind of business so each uh, sector and also for each individual what may work for our law firm may not work for another law firm so it has to be tailor fit for each and every scenario and you need to be very careful if you're doing this as a new business to make sure you cover all the areas which are likely to be hot spots for problems. For instance, how do you onboard new partners and how does someone exit if they choose to? That's what I wish to discuss for today. My colleagues will in other series cover more deeply aspects of what I've touched on today. Uh, thank you and goodbye.